Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Tea with Brittany Lee. I am so excited. You guys don't even know. I know I say that every time and I have like a lot of energy and you guys think like, oh my gosh, this girl's probably crazy. But this time I'm legitimately super, super, super excited. Um, Saad Malik is going to be on with us today and we are talking about how to make an ironclad marketing plan for your most successful year yet. Now, for those of you that don't know, I am part of the marketing department. I actually do the social media marketing um, at VRM, and I am really, really happy to have Saad on today. Saad and I are part of the marketing team here at VRM, along with Connie Hutchins, who um, is listening in. Hello, Connie. We love you. Um, and so we are going to give you guys some of our insights today about some of the best strategies that you can employ to get the most successful year that you've ever had on your digital marketing. Um, Saad is super experienced. Let's go ahead and meet Saad. This is him and his girlfriend, Crystal, who is absolutely adorable. Um, they live in Austin, Texas. And he has worked in the digital marketing industry since 2012. He's currently an active Google Local Guides contributor, which is fantastic. Um, and this picture right here is from his very first, yes, I said very first camping trip, which was in 2014 at Big Sur State Park, which is so adorable that, that he went camping for the first time in 2014. My parents used to drag me along on camping trips ever since I was little and I actually love camping now people who know me don't really uh, associate me with camping maybe glamping but not so much on camping but um, so Saad tells me now that he loves camping and that they go every chance that they get they're out there camping doing stuff so um, welcome to Tea with Brittany Lee Saad I'm super excited to have you on today thanks so much for carving out time to do this I know you're super busy Hey, Brittany, a pleasure to be here, and I'm looking forward to providing important marketing information to our listeners. That's awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and run down the topics that Saad's going to talk about, and then I'll sure. let Saad take it away. We're going to cover four major marketing tips that you need to be using right now. Um, number one, reviews and brand marketing, and how to do that, how to break that down, because I have a lot of people that contact me and say, I just have so much trouble with my reviews, and how do I do this? How do I effectively manage people that are upset or disgruntled? Because let's be honest, those are mostly the ones that are writing reviews. It's hard to get people out there to write good reviews, so we're going to give you some tips on how to manage that effectively and how to get some good reviews up on your um on your Facebook and your Yelp and website and things like that. So um, number two, schema.org markup. I know, it's like talking a different language. You probably don't even know what that is. That's okay. Saad is here to talk about it today. Uh, number three, blogging and evergreen content. These are super important to your marketing strategy. And then number four, rounding it out, I am actually going to talk about email marketing today. So I'm going to let Saad go ahead and take it away, and we are going to go over everything that you need to know for your most successful year yet marketing. Yeah, so the four strategies that we're going to be covering today are not just limited to SEO. They're a comprehensive list of items that's going to help you with conversions, but also build uh, brand awareness. And a great way to start about uh, is reviews and brand monitoring. So uh, we hear a lot of questions from our customers wanting to know the best strategies for how to manage uh, reviews and uh, brand monitoring. So um, for our industry, year by year, customer reviews are becoming an important purchasing and decision influencer. Uh, I had the study that I'm referencing is the data comes from Bright Local, who has been conducting these surveys since 2010. They're very well reputable, have been featured in Entrepreneur and Forbes, uh, Forbes.com. So um, according to their research, more people are reading reviews on a regular basis uh, as in 2015, it was the only 33%, and this is, we've seen a big jump now uh, as of 2016. It's 50% of users are reading reviews uh, regularly. And the next point that I have is really interesting, which is that 84% of people trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. Uh, there's a little bit of a slight 
uh, increase from 2015, but this 84%, it's an immense number and really shows that this is, reviews are the new word of mouth marketing and, and, and it really, uh, really helpful in building trust and uh, also building brand loyalty. For our industry, this is really vital because guests, when they're staying somewhere or interested in staying somewhere, they want to make sure that they're going to have a really good experience with the rental property. And the data uh, validates this. Uh, Bright Local uh, says that hotels and bread and breakfast reviews uh, were the second most frequently searched for business category, with uh, restaurants being number one. So we can see that for our industry, this is a really important strategy, and it really helps uh, with conversions. Uh, the other thing I would like to mention is that it's not uh, it's important not to just focus on one platform so if you're really active on Facebook or Yelp uh, or TripAdvisor uh, it, it's really good to branch out and get positive reviews or good solid reviews uh, from multiple uh, sources so multiple signals of uh, positive reviews will help increase your chances of conversion the reason behind this uh, is that According to the data, 59% of consumers look at two to three websites before they make a decision about a business. So um, the great thing that we have with our VRM website is that we have the guest service that leaves uh, that allows customers to leave a review. Then we also have uh, Yelp, Facebook, other avenues where people could leave a review, and it it really shows a comprehensive uh, brand. Uh, the power of a brand so really helpful and really important to uh, branch out and get multiple sources for reviews two strategies that we have for reviews and brand monitoring is that uh, be proactive about requesting uh, reviews from your guests uh, in VRM we have the guest survey email which can be automated to be sent out to a customer after they've uh, uh, completed their stay also, you can leave a note uh, at the rental property. I've seen this with uh, some rentals that I've stayed at where they have a really nice note saying that we hope you enjoyed your trip. Uh, please leave a review on our website or uh, they have links, uh, they have uh, images of the social networks they're a part of that just tells you that what networks they're on. And whichever network your guests are active on, they would be more inclined to leave a review on there as opposed to limiting them with options where they might have to create an account somewhere and then uh, leave a review. So making it easier for them and be proactive about asking them for reviews uh, because it's really helpful. The other thing which is really important, which is a question that uh, we get asked uh, from our clients pretty often is you know, how, how to um, what do we do when we get reviews? Um, so a really important uh, key item is that you should respond to all reviews, uh, whether if it's uh, positive or unfortunately a low uh, uh, rating review. Uh, you should thank them for expressing their opinion. If there's any uh, complaints, apologize for it. And then offer to follow up by phone or email so that uh, you, you show that you are uh, you really care about their satisfaction and you will make everything right. And uh, when readers uh, read this or your future guests read this they're gonna see that okay there might be uh, an unfortunate experience but that's not the normal trend of this company they really care about their customers and and they feel more um, better of uh, with going with your brand so it's really helpful so the next item we have is schema markup Schema markup um, is a bit technical, uh, but it's an important asset in a uh, successful marketing strategy, and we'll see a little bit uh, ahead why uh, schema markup is really important. So what is schema markup? So schema is a code, uh, a code snippet or a bunch of code that is placed on a website so that search engines can better understand the information that is on your website. It's, uh, it's, it's basically providing information to uh, the search engine crawlers, uh, the bots that read your website, it's providing information in a language that they understand better. It helps users with providing more relevant results for their search. That's what Google loves it. And schema.org uh, is sponsored by Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Yenix. These are the major search engine result, uh, search engine uh, websites. And um, the reason why Google and all these other places love it is because their goal is to provide the most relevant 
search result for a search query. So the more uh, enhanced the search result is that's relative to what you were looking for, the better the user experience. And it's really helpful uh, for Google. Unfortunately, there has been a slow adaptation of schema markup by webmasters. Uh, but one third of uh, all Google searches incorporate schema markup rich snippets. So we can see that it's, it's really, it's uh, really, it's taking a big uh, place in, in Google search results and Google is really actively pushing for it. Uh, however, the adaptation to this is really slow and uh, not a lot of people know about schema markup. A great uh, resource to uh, visit uh, in regards to schema markup is schema.org. That's the organization that uh, manages uh, schema markups. It's a regulatory body. And um, another information um, that's really important for SEO uh, and showing the importance of uh, a schema markup is that according to uh, research conducted by Search Metric, which is a very uh, well reputed firm in online marketing, uh, they say that sites using schema uh, rank on average four positions better than those without. So this really shows that uh, a schema uh, and creating a better user experience for your guests uh, helps getting ranked better for your website. So it has twofold results, helps with your rankings, and also provides a better a better set of information to your customers. I, I, and on the image that you're seeing right now, we have an example of someone searching for apple pie. It sounds delicious. Um, and then we can see that uh, the first result has schema markup applied. You can see that it has uh, s some detailed information, how many calories it is, how long does it take for uh, how long is the cooking time, um, and, and really helps with uh, bringing users to your page as well because when they see this versus a search result without a schema uh, rich snippet, they they will they see that this your page is providing more information. They'll be more inclined to click on it. So it really helps with bringing in more traffic as well. Um, just a quick uh, uh, set of information: rich snippets is the result that you see that comes from implementing schema markup. So um, that's what rich snippets are: those cards that you see on Google search results. So the great thing is that at uh, VRM, all of our clients have a schema markup, a, a local business schema markup implemented on their websites. There are multiple hundreds of schema markups. Um, one of them is local business, which uh, provides Google with information about uh, a business so that they can put the business information in a better manner on Google, Google Maps, and their partners. So um, we can see an example of this code being implemented. Uh, Brittany, can you go back a little bit? I, I'd like to, um, thanks. Sorry. I'd like to dive in a little bit, yeah, uh, because I just want to provide some information about the code itself. So as you can see um, on the left, uh, I have highlighted that we have the schema.org.localbusiness. All it does is it tells Google that, okay, this is a business, and then uh, we have a little, a little bit lower down, we have the postal address, street address. So it's a better way of providing uh, search engines the information about your website and then uh, you can uh, test this out and, and it, it confirms that the schema on the right that it's it has no errors and it's validating in a, in a great manner and on the next screen we can see how that shows up on Google you can see on the right that the information that we placed on our schema uh, is being uh, outlet now this is the rich snippet that's on the right end of uh, the image and we can see that it, uh, the information is clearly being uh, put out by Google. Now, Google search crawlers and uh, other search crawlers are pretty smart to recognize what the page, uh, the information on a page. But when you make the process easier for them, it, it, it Google gives you credit for that. So that's that's the whole concept behind schema markup. So it's really helpful uh, for uh, getting better rankings. It's really helpful for a better user experience. It's really helpful for bringing in uh, solid traffic to your website. And we are at, v at VRM. We're continuing to uh, bring in more schema markup implementations within our system, uh, and we're definitely going to keep our clients uh, posted on that. So some exciting news coming up in the next coming months.
The next strategy we have is a little bit easier to implement than the schema markup, but it has yielded amazing results for our clients. Um, if you want to start blogging, Connie's uh, Tea with Brittany Lee uh, episode has some great information uh, about basics of blogging, so I, I highly recommend you uh, check it out. Now, um, what the whole concept behind updating blog posts and evergreen content is that um, in 2003, a patent filed by Google, which is titled Information Retrieval Based on Historical Data, uh, they talk about content freshness as a ranking factor. Now to quickly explain what ranking factors are, these are elements within a website or uh, elements associated to a website that affects its search engine result page rankings. Some examples are meta tags and even schema markup is an example of ranking factor. The more, the, the better utilization of ranking factors, the better your website ranks. Content freshness, uh, Google talked about um, content freshes in a 2003 patent and uh, we have we're starting to see uh, the powerful role that content freshness is uh, playing uh, within search engine results. Uh, now updating a black, uh, blog post is a great strategy to benefit from this content uh, freshness ranking signal. Uh, the concept behind this is that uh, you first upload one version of your blog or a page uh, which for example could be 750 words. Then three to six months you go back to the blog post or the page and you update the content with relative images, relative update to the information. If there's uh, some new updates on the topic that you were writing about, it's a great opportunity for you to update uh, the existing content. And what you do is you don't delete what you uh, posted in, in, in the past uh, unless it's something that's just outdated and it's, it's then it's good to fix that or let your customers know. Uh, and then you continue to update the content and that's what uh, evergreen, the concept of evergreen con uh, content comes in where it, the content grows as time goes. On the uh, next slide, um, we have, uh, we can see that uh, our marketing department implemented this uh, strategy for our client. Uh, for a blog post and this post was originally posted in um, August 2012. Google registered this blog post and its topic. So the, it, Google um, indexed this page, uh, it indexed the URL of the page. Then um, once we updated it with additional information to provide value to our readers, uh, what uh, Google does is that their bots crawl the web page again and they recognize an update and it uh, sees that the content is being updated and freshened up. Uh, therefore, uh, an update in, 2000, in May 2016, uh, Google accepts our blog as an authority for the topic and on the next slide you'll see how it has uh, benefited our, uh, our visits. So on this graph you will see that um, uh, the, the poster is originally from August 2012, so you can see very minimal uh, traffic going on uh, for the first, I, I didn't even say year to two years, two years. Uh, but then the traffic has been increased. Uh, and then in May 2016, when we made an update, Google sees that uh, we've been keeping the content fresh. And when someone searches for this topic, Google says that, hey, this, this web page or this blog post has is being pretty active with keeping the content fresh for fixing any broken links, adding relative images. Let's let's show them uh, up on Google search results for this topic. So uh, this is really really helpful. It's been it's been a great resource for us, and and we continue to utilize this resource for all our clients. And uh, and uh, on the next slide, we can actually show you on how you could also make use of that. So the next question would be, how do you update a blog post? What we have done is we've broken it down into a three-step process. Number one, research. Number two, select. And number three, update. So on the next slide, we'll go with number one. So before you decide what which blog to update, it's great to do a little bit of research to see which blog will perform the best for this strategy. So uh, using uh, Google Analytics or your preferred analytics tool, um, look through your uh, page views and analytics data to see 
uh, when or and, and what pages or what blog posts are getting a substantial amount of traffic so that you can uh, finalize certain uh, or you can create a list of uh, blog posts that are a good fit to select from. So in this example what I've done since we use Google Analytics for our clients I've, I've created a few steps uh, so but the first thing you'd want to do is log into your Google Analytics account and select your profile. On the left menu uh, that has uh, different views of the reporting uh, you, once you click on behavior and then site content and then third click would be on all pages you'll get a, a view of all the pages that are, have been receiving traffic to your website. The next uh, option would be to uh, select the date range and going back as far as you can so that you can see all the traffic all the data that has been accumulated for your for your uh, website. Um, for Google Analytics it's really good to um, click on the drop down for the show rows um, and increase it to 250 or 500 so that you um, can see uh, a substantial amount of data within one page and, and, and make your decision based on that. And then nextly with VRM our blogs contain this uh, uh, slug or tag of post so uh, on, the blog, on the search query box just enter in post and, you, and what it's going to do is going to filter in only the blog post so you can easily uh, select uh, the blog post that would be a good option and on the next slide we'll look at uh, the selection process. So um, once you have the list uh, pulled up uh, browse through the list and um, a few factors to look in uh, or, or review are the unique page views and average page on time and also the blog topic which you can read by either clicking on the post or reading on the UR, uh, reading the URL to see if you can make a uh, good understanding of what's on there. Um, average page on time, we we recommend it not uh, it being anywhere. Uh, it, it should be a little bit over uh, at least one minute because uh, sometimes blog posts do get traffic, but it's not being read well. So you just want to make sure that you know people are taking time to read it, and you can see that through the average uh, time on page. Also, the other element would be the unique page views. It, it's really good to see um, how many page views you're, you've gotten for uh, a set of blog posts so that you can um, finalize uh, or select a post which is popular and it has an interest uh, within your readers. So uh, certain topics uh, are uh, topics that require an update. Uh, for example, uh, the best restaurants in your area. Now this is something that's going to change from 2012 to 2014. Uh, some uh, restaurants may branch out. They, some restaurants might have uh, new uh, restaurant chains in your area. So uh, certain topics just are really good for uh, updates because it's somewhat required uh, to have a modern uh, fresh outlook on the topic. And then on the other hand there are some uh, topics that um, can be enhanced by providing more information. The 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 example that we showed of uh, the turtle hatching season, um, if, if we pr uh, we did a little bit more research and we found that we could provide some more information to our users, so it's just really uh, that's uh, that that's a good strategy to decide on uh, what topic to choose. Uh, next uh, slide, we're gonna um, go over how to update. So w once you've decided a good option based on the topic, the unique page views, uh, you will uh, you will update that blog post. So uh, visit your blog administration panel uh, at VRM. We have this under the, uh, get, uh, under the admin panel. Uh, the updating of the title is something that's optional. Uh, sometimes uh, it's it's good to um, Put a distinction out there that it's uh, that you have an update in information. So, uh, for example, we've written down 2016 update. What to do in your area or Thanksgiving weekend? Uh, the next item you'd want to do is uh, update the content by adding 200 to 500 words to the blog post, um, adding relative images, and fixing any broken links. So, so you're not only 
you're not only adding information to the blog post, but you're also enhancing user experience. If there's an image that's broken, if it's a link that you provided to uh, a property that doesn't have that web page anymore, it's it's good to fix all those things so that um, you you want when your readers are going over this blog post and clicking on something, it has to be a perfect experience for them. Uh, and another thing uh, you want to do, which is really important, is that uh, the URL of the blog post uh, must be same. Uh, the concept behind this, uh, and the URL is is the uh, the address of the blog post, uh, which should be same. And Brittany, thanks for pointing that out. So uh, the concept behind this is that if you change the address of the page, Google is going to register the update as a new blog post. Uh, because Google uh, has registered, or any other search engine crawler, has registered this post not by the title, not by the content, but by the address. So it's very, very important to keep the same URL or else you're not going to benefit from this. Um, lastly, keep the original post date there uh, because it, you, know, you, you provide uh, um, a, a, a clear information that this post was originally uh, posted in on on a certain date, and then it's important to add a note on on the top end of the page so that Google search crawlers or, or other search crawlers, when they go through your uh, the blog, the update, they're gonna see that okay, uh, the last time we checked this uh, page, it had uh, 1,000 words. Now, interestingly, it has 1,200 words, so there has to be a change, and that's how we benefit from the uh, content freshness. All right. Well, thank you, Saad. And this is the point of Tea with Brittany Lee where I do a little bit of a takeover and awesome. I talk about email marketing. Um, this is for VRM. We have realized it is one of the most affordable strategies that has the highest ROI among most of your digital marketing channels. So that would include it's got a higher ROI than social media, it's got a higher ROI than um, you know most of the other things that you're going to do. Email marketing is a direct communication with your customer, um, which is a really big deal because there's not a ton of ways that you can actually directly speak to your audience on a regular basis multiple uses for this as promoting vacation rentals, building brand awareness, and announcing exciting news to your past guests. So if you have new properties coming into your rental program, obviously you're going to want to update people about that. You're going to want to send out an email about that. Um, I have some really nicely designed examples down here of some very common um, email marketing campaigns that we see on a regular basis. These are very well designed, they have bright colors, they're interesting to read, they have information that the reader wants and needs. Um, one of the things that, that Connie always um, tells me and that she's shared this story a couple times and I, I love it, is um, one time she and her husband were looking to get some yard products for their, for their home and it was just kind of a last minute thing that they were doing, they were doing some updates and they said, you know, oh, where where should we go to buy mulch? And I don't even know if that's the right thing, but um, but she said, where? I, you know, I feel like I've gotten an email about this recently, and sure enough, in her inbox, she had gotten a, an email from a company that did landscaping that was local to her, and um, she didn't need the information at the time, so she just deleted it. But what happened was when her and her husband, spur of the moment, decided to redo their yard, that was the first company that came up on the top of their list. And do you know why? Because she had just seen an email from them. So their name was at the front of her mind. And so that's who they ended up buying their mulch from. So this is a really interesting strategy. People say like, oh, well, I didn't get you know, 15 sales from this. No, but you may have gotten brand awareness and a reach out to your clients that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And then they decide to go to your website through direct traffic on Google and you're seeing, you know, this sale, this conversion on your website that wouldn't have been there without your email marketing strategy. So there are a lot of different reasons why you want to do email marketing and it's not always just about the clicks that happen on your email marketing. Um, 
just some basic statistics about email marketing. Um, according to the Direct Marketing Association, it yields an estimated 4,300% ROI. That is astronomical. It is one of the ways that people will buy from you on a more regular basis when you are promoting the things that you have available. Um, if you have open homes for a certain you know week of, of the year, like July 4th weekend, if you have a few homes open in the in the end of June or middle of June and you want to get that out to people, get it out to people and you will see conversions. Um, Every dollar that you spend on email marketing offers a return on average of $44, says Exact Target. So that is that is a huge number because if you're spending, you know, $100, $200, $300 on your email marketing and you're really focused on sending out these emails on a regular basis, then you're actually going to see a lot more return on that investment. Um, it's kind of one of those things where it's like the more that you put in, the more that you get out. Um, email marketing works 40 times better at getting customers than Facebook and Twitter compared to social media. It offers 17% higher conversions than social media. Now, that being said, social media is extremely important. And if you're not doing a good job of social media, I highly encourage you to make sure that's part of your strategy this year. Um, Social media is a great way to start conversations with your fans and actually get them interested in you. Um, it is more about brand awareness than any of the other social and any of the other marketing channels that you have. Um, adding a social sharing button can increase your email click through rates by 158 percent. That is a really big deal because that means that people that are reading your emails are saying, oh, my friend so-and-so that I have on Facebook would really love this. Let me go ahead and share this email on Facebook with them so that they can actually see what I'm talking about. And that's a really great way to get people to do brand outreach for you. You don't have to do the work there. They're doing the work for you if they love what you're putting out. Um, the other really huge benefit to email marketing and I get this question a lot from clients when they ask me about our email marketing service they say you know you don't sell our list or anything like that VRM does not do that and if you are at a marketing firm that does that to your list you need to leave because that is not a good practice for um, for your email marketing list your email list of customers is yours and there are ways to pull those email marketing lists from your VRM console if you need help with that go ahead and send it help a ticket in we'll be more than happy to let you know how you can get that report and get that email marketing we update our email marketing lists on a monthly basis when we send out our, our email marketing um, newsletters for our clients. We make sure that we update them on a regular basis because you get new people in there, especially when it's high booking season like right now. So unlike your SEO rankings or your PPC ad positions, those things change on a, you know, the wind blows the right way at Google and your, your rankings could tank or soar depending on how they're feeling that day. So your email marketing list, that is a verified list of customers that you have that you own the information to. So that is a really valuable asset. Make sure you protect that. Um, so that was everything that I had about email marketing today. I just want to say thank you to Saad. Um, now comes the questions portion of Tea with Brittany Lee, and I am actually going to launch a poll and have you guys answer a question for me today. Um, this poll right here is going to just, I want you guys to just click, what are some of the challenges that you face when you're marketing? What is your biggest pain point when you're marketing? And um, we'll just get, we'll get some statistics. I'll leave this up here for just a couple of minutes. I see you guys clicking away on your buttons, and it seems like blogging seems to be a really heavy pain point and website marketing are, are heavy pain points. So those are things that you can easily fix and the VRM marketing department, we offer a lot of these services. So if you're interested in any of these services, you can always send us an email. I'm part of the marketing department. You can email me directly if you want to or you can just send in a ticket to help at vrmgr.com. Um, either way is totally fine, but we love to help our clients and we've been doing this for quite a long time now and 
Um, we have a really good line on the industry. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close this poll up. So if you haven't answered, go ahead and click your answer real quick. And poll closing in three, two, one, closed. All right. So essentially, right now, um, I'm going to have you guys send in your questions. And I am going to answer those for you. And Saad is here to answer those questions as well. So go ahead and stick those into the questions feature and go to webinar. And we have a couple questions already. You guys are quick on the draw today. All right. So this uh, question comes from Connie. When you blog, do you include all the graphics or just the writing? Um, well, for VRM, when we do blogging, um, you saw an example of one of our client blogs. We include all of those graphics, and you own those. Um, you own the rights to them. You can post them on your social media. That's something that we didn't mention when you were um, blogging, so here's your little bonus tip from Brittany. Make sure that you post your blogs on social media, and if they're relevant in a year, update them and post them again. Yes, this is perfectly acceptable. Please, please, please repost content. That is a really important part of your strategy, and you're going to see a lot more return. Like we showed you on that traffic graph with the blogging, it is really important to continue to repost information that's relevant and that people are interested in. So um, the other thing that we do is that we make sure that when we update, we update the graphics. So if you have a responsive website, make sure that you have the responsive tags on your graphics so that they show beautifully. Um, and if you need help with that, let us know. We're more than happy to help. We, we want to make sure that you're successful in every marketing endeavor that you send. Um, the next question is um, from Sarah, and she said, how many emails a month should I be sending? Well. Lucky for you, I was just at the VRMA conference and I watched all of these little educational seminars and one of the ones that I loved the most actually talked about email marketing as one of the highest ROI social media um, or marketing networks that you have access to and you should be sending two emails a month on average. Um, if you start doing more than that, you're going to want to make sure that you're really careful about the content that you send so that it's not repeated or annoying to your client base. Um, but two emails a month in general is what we recommend. You want to send one big, nice, long newsletter every month with some area events or some promotions that you have going on um, and some properties that you want to feature that you want to get people in on. Um, and then you want to send out something that's like a mid, we call it a mid-month blast. And you want to blast the information out. You want to get something special out. Um, you know, during the holidays, this is a great time time for you to send out um, a holiday email for you. You know, people are getting together with their families, they're planning their 2017 vacations, get something out. Just It doesn't have to be really, um, really big and really crazy. Just get your name out there. Get your name into their inbox and let them see what you're offering. So um, it looks like that's all of the questions that we got today. I just want to say thank you again to Saad so much for coming on today. I know you're really busy and this was a really awesome way for us to actually um, communicate to all of our clients about some of the things that they could do. So thank you again so much, Saad. We're really, really glad to have had you on today. My pleasure, Brittany. It's been a great experience. Looking forward to more. Awesome. Um, okay, so just announcing next month's Tea with Brittany Lee. Um, amazing 1099 tips that will make your life easier this tax season. This is one that you are not going to want to miss. If you have not registered for that, you can go ahead and register at bit.ly forward slash TWBL 2016. And I will also send that link out in my follow-up email that I always send out. So if you're registered for this webinar, you're going to get the... Um, you're going to get the replay, and also I've included a handout with all of our slides from today so that you can review the information. But if you happen to not get that email for some reason, you can always check our blog, virtualresortmanager.com forward slash blog, and we have tons of really useful information on our blog, how to do things in the VRM console to make your life easier. So if you are interested and you are just got a couple minutes of downtime, go check that out. It's a really awesome resource for our clients, um, and we work really hard to make sure that our blogging is up to par with um, 
with what you guys need uh, information wise. So thank you again everybody so much for making Tea with Brittany and Lee so successful. I'm, I've been really honored to be part of this process of making Tea with Brittany and Lee something that you guys can look forward to. If you have uh, topics that you would like for us to include in our 2017 planning, be sure to email those to me, Brittany at virtualresortmanager.com and I am looking forward to seeing you all in December. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye guys.